sticking out and above about that far. We're coming down at about that far. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. Chain plates. There's a huge debate. Should they be internal? Should they be external? Well, we're going to look at what are the pros and cons of having internal versus external chain plates and then talk about why we're switching from internal to external. The biggest con of an external chain plate is that you can see it and they're not very pretty. So no one wants that. That's why everyone wants internal chain plates because then they're hidden. Like, I mean, there's multiple chain plates right behind me. You don't see them. And from outside, you don't see them either. So it's prettier that way. The problem with internal chain plates is you don't see them. They're hard to inspect. And then the part that goes from inside the boat, like in here, to outside the deck, that passage through the deck where it's bedded down, no one can inspect that. The only way to actually inspect that is to remove the chain plate, which is very laborious. Take a look at it. And then if everything's good, put it back in. Internal chain plates means that you now have a hole in your deck and water can pour in through that hole and then leak because if the chain plate wiggles or the bedding breaks down around it, whatever, you have a deck that's covered in water and it's gonna go in through any holes and the chain plate is a hole. So it'll make its way through the chain plate, corrode the chain plate faster in an area you can't see and inspect, plus, you know, have water leaking into your boat. So none of that's fun. Having external chain plates, you don't have one hole in your deck per chain plate but you have multiple holes on the top sides because each chain plate is bolted through the chain plate onto your hull. It's not one bolt. You're looking at multiple bolts and each bolt is a bolt hole, which needs to be bedded or it's gonna leak. And then you're gonna have a whole bunch of leaks all the time because if you heel over and the chain plate goes underwater and that bolt isn't well bedded, water's coming in. It's not so much of a, hey, this will fix all of your problems by going this way. It's, that is not the case. It is definitely trading problems. To us, being able to inspect them better is more important than them looking prettier. Everyone does stainless steel for chain plates. That's just the standard. Chain plates are made out of 316L stainless steel. It's a certain grade, it's low carbon, it's, it's really, really good stuff. It won't rust but it will get crevice corrosion, especially if it's in an anaerobic environment. So if there's no oxygen around it, it's gonna get crevice corrosion. And guess what? That section of the deck where it's bedded down, there is no oxygen in there because there's no other gases. It's sealed up with sealant. So what you get is in the spot that you cannot inspect, it'll get a crack through it. And then your chain plate breaks, which that is why you need to replace your chain plates every 10 years. Not because they look bad, but because in a 10 year period, one of your chain plates will get crevice corrosion in there. And if you leave it, it'll become the chain plate that broke. So that's why the rule of thumb, replace all your chain plates every 10 years. Some people are using titanium for chain plate. It's so much lighter than stainless steel. It's stronger. It's got all these amazing properties, but it can still get crevice corrosion in an anaerobic environment. Because of that, I'm not using titanium. I'm actually going the old way. And I'm going to be using bronze because bronze doesn't get crevice corrosion. Its big issue is that it's brown color. It's not shiny. It's not, you know, a beautiful mirror. When you look at it, you don't see yourself. When you look at it, you see a piece of bronze. So we're going to be making our chain plates external and bronze. Now we need to figure out how big do our chain plates need to be. Using this book, it needs to be 11.11 .11 millimeters thick. Using this book, it needs to be 9.58 millimeters thick. This one's a little thicker. Width, 44.45 millimeters, 47.05 millimeters. So this one says to make it a little thicker, but a little narrower. This one says make it a little thinner, but a little wider. There you are. Now the metal that is above the eye, so what that would be, is say you look at this iPhone with these lenses here, it's pretty much how much is this thickness. So that way when you pull up on a hole made where that lens is, when it pulls up that this metal above it is strong enough to support it so it doesn't just rip out and, and tear it out. 
And a really good way to, to evaluate, and, and it's a thing that you check when you're looking at your chain plates, is to make sure that the hole at the top of the chain plate where the clevis pin goes ha is a hole and it's round and it's not an oval. Because if it's overloaded and starts to stretch, you're risking that it's gonna crack and actually tear off the top bit of metal and your chain plate will be fine, but the top of it ripped off. So that's, I guess the chain plate wouldn't be that fine, but that's a thing that you look at. So you wanna make sure that you have enough metal above there that way it doesn't tear off. So 27 millimeters for this one, 17.468, so 17 and a half millimeters for this one. That's the big differences. So this one, it says thicker, little more narrow, and then a whole bunch of metal above the clevis pin, where this one says, go thinner, go wider, and then you also need less metal above the clevis pin. As you can tell, none of this says anything about how long the chain plate needs to be. And that's because the chain plate's length has nothing to do with the chain plate's strength. The strength comes from the cross-sectional area. If you take, you know, this book is pretty thick. It doesn't matter how long the book is, how thick is the book? If you try and pull this book apart and you're like yanking on it, it's gonna be hard to pull apart because of its thickness. You take a thinner book, it takes less force to tear it apart. That's why you can pull one sheet of paper, but it's hard to rip a phone book. Same concept. So the length of it does not matter for its strength. Where the length comes in is to support the number of fasteners that you need to attach it to your boat. Now, an important thing with a chain plate the, the junction between the chain plate and the boat, like the thing that's holding it together is not actually the bolts going from the chain plate through the hull. The force is going to the friction between the chain plate and the hull. And that joint is called a slip critical joint. And I'm just gonna read you the definition. So I just Googled it and the definition of a slip critical joint is, uh, it's a form of structural engineering it is a type of bolted structural steel connection which relies on friction between the two connected elements rather than bolt shear or bolt bearing to join two structural elements. The bolt is just clamping the two together so that the friction between the two can take the load. Now this is where it gets really important. Depending on the size of your bolt, the thicker the bolt gets, the higher you need to torque it because when you're bolting it, you don't just bolt it till it feels tight and you're done. Like that's why you see like auto mechanics, they work with a torque wrench. You need to bolt, you need to tighten it and you need to tighten it past where it feels tight to the point that it's set to. And there's tables for how you can calculate what is the tension that you need to tighten a bolt to, to get the right tension on it. But the, the important thing you need to know is that when you tighten the bolt, it starts pulling apart, right? You're gonna pull it until it actually stretches a little bit and then the tension that it's under and that stretch that it went through it's then going to be pulling everything together with that tension so that's why you need to torque it to the correct amount now a thing you got to bear in mind is you need to torque it wherever you're putting it so if you get this like massive bolt that needs a minimum of 200 foot pounds to torque it and it's in a little locker that you reach like like that at the very end you're in trouble you're never going to get that thing tight so when you're picking which bolt, you also wanna look at, all right, where is it? Can I reach it? Will I be able to get enough torque on it to make sure that it's set to the proper torque specification? That way everything holds properly. Okay, so now that we got that fun part out of the way, we know that we need it to be uh, 0.88 inches. That's how much metal we need to have interfacing the chain plate and the hull. That means that we, if we did 3 8 inch bolts, we would need 12 bolts, that's a lot. If we did half inch, we need 6.2, so seven bolts. If we did 5 eighths, we need 3.7 bolts, so four bolts. And if we did three quarter, two and a half bolts gets us by, so three bolts. If you take the diameter of each bolt, so 12 bolts for the three eighths, plus that space between each bolt, you now need 18 inches of metal for your chain plate for bolting surface area, not including the top part. Half inch bolts, you're down to 11 inches. 5 8 inch bolt, you're at seven inches. Three quarter inch bolt, four inches. Uh, I know from an aesthetic standpoint, Maddie told me she wants to have an odd number of bolts, and I personally would rather have three, five, or seven bolts. 
If you're a traveling man out there, you know exactly why I like three, five, or seven bolts. We gotta order the chain plates, I gotta find where to get these bolts, get those ordered, and then now we're gonna go look at the spaces that we're gonna be using for these chain plates. Like, what, what does that area look like? Okay, these, this is our chain plate situation, and you can see it's pretty creative in here with some other plumbing. This is actually our shower discharge. So we're taking a shower, all the water dumps way up here, nice and high. And the goal is that when we heal over, this is still out of the water. So these little holes, uh, that's the backing to the, uh, to the rub rail. So that's, that's the height of our rub rail. This other guy, this is the vent hose to our toilet. This rusty thing, that's our chain plate. That rusty thing, that's our other chain plate. Here's the stainless steel part that you see outside, and then it's just bolted to this very, very rusty uh, piece of iron. So this is why we're replacing our chain plates. Now, if we just replace the chain plates as they are, uh, I mean, the stainless steel part isn't really the worst of it all. The iron is in such bad shape. So the chain plates have leaked over the years, and then water got in, and then it just poured right on the iron. So thankfully it's iron and not steel because steel just rusts a lot faster. Iron rusts at a very controlled rate because I used to wonder why on earth put iron in a salt water sailboat. So I'm gonna be taking it out. We're going to be switching from this internal system and we're just going to go bronze directly to the top sides of the hull. Now, is this perfect? Is this ideal? No, as you can see, we have you know the bulkheads here. We need to, increase the amount of tabbing that goes from the hull to the bulkhead because the load that's going to be now on this glass here it needs to be able to transfer that load very well and very effectively to the bulkheads. I'm not calling them errors because the more I've gotten into boat design the more I realize that boats are just a series of compromises. You know what you were supposed to do but then it didn't fit so then you did stuff that did fit that still got the job done. So that's that's what we're going to be doing here as well. We're gonna try and shoot for doing it the ideal and perfect way, but we know that it's gonna go the realistic way. But with that, we know what size chain plate we need to have and what size bolts we need to have. Now we just need to figure out where to buy them. And honestly, I'm at a little bit of a loss on that one. So I haven't been able to find silicone bronze in the size that we need to get. So if you guys know any place that sells silicone bronze as a bar, ideally half inch by two inch, that'd be really good and also large bronze bolts. So either five eighths or three quarter inch, but not fully threaded. I and mean, we don't need to have threads cut in the part that's running through the chain plate. So if you guys have any good suppliers that you can recommend, please let me know because we're in the market. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time as we continue the project of converting wisdom to having external bronze chain plates. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. I can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.